Hi, it's Tara here. It is my fortnightly broadcast. I know, it's exciting. So today I want to talk to you about a couple of things. They're tied together, so stay with me. Um, the first piece is the 100% lean in, okay? So this is a thing I talk about a lot. I've written articles about it and da 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 And I probably... I probably spend too much time talking about it, but I digress. <laughs> so the 100% lean in is, is a construct that we talk about in relationship. And it exists in every relationship, really. And I'm going to give you an example using a barista and a customer at Starbucks. So the 100% lean in, it's, it's about both of us, both people in a relationship, um, leaning in a hundred percent, recognizing that if we're not leaning in, the person that we're in relationship with is going to fall over. And if we're leaning too far, we're going to push that person over and us leaning in helps them to lean in. So if we picture two people leaning against each other with their hands, you know, over their heads, holding on to each other, this is how it works, right? If one person's not leaning, everybody falls down. So, Starbucks. We've all been to Starbucks, right? Um, so, I'm going to explain what it looks like if everyone is functioning at 100% in Starbucks as kind of an agreement about how this works, okay? So, 100% is you walk into Starbucks, you stand in the lineup, you figure out what you want from the order board, and you walk up to the counter, and the barista says, how can I help you? What can I get for you? Whatever. And you, your job at 100% is to answer that question and say, I'd like a, you know, venti frappa lappuccino or pumpkin, whoops, pumpkin spice latte or whatever that might be. So you order, then you have your little card or your money or your whatever you're going to pay with. She tells you the total and you pay and then you say thank you because you're polite and perhaps Canadian and you shuffle down and you get your coffee and you put the coffee stuff in it and you leave. End of interaction, correct? Okay, so now we'll talk about what is not 100%. So if, all right, so say you get to the counter and you were supposed to choose your Frappa a -a ding dong but you didn't. So you have no idea what you want. This is often me. <laughs> so you go to the counter and the person says, what can I get for you? And you go, mm, I don't know what's good, right? And there's a line up behind you and people are mad and you decide, okay, I'm just going to have a, a grande latte. So you finally order, okay? So that is you stepping up to your 100%. That is you showing up, that's you leveling up, okay? Now, so let's say you got to the counter and the barista was like, I don't know, talking about a date she had last night or or picking up something off the floor or tying her shoelace or fixing her hair or texting on her phone. Any of those things could be happening and that would be her not doing the 100% because her 100% is kind of what we expect, right? Customer orders, barista takes the order. So if either piece, either piece of that is not complete, then we have a bit of a failure. So let's say we get to the counter and we don't have our wallet. We reach into our purse or our pocket and we realize, oh man, my wallet's in my car. So this is you failing to show up at 100%. So what if you said to the barista, I've left my wallet in my car. Can you wait just a sec while I go grab it? And she says, yeah, no problem, dude. And off you go and you get your wallet. That is you now at 100%. Basically, if we don't show up as expected in any given relationship, we have to kind of explain why. We have to let them know why our 100% looks different today. And it might be, you know, that we forgot the wallet in the car. Or maybe we get to the counter and the barista is nowhere to be seen. And then she bops her head up because, and she says, I'm just cleaning up something that spilled on the floor. I'll just be a moment. Ta-da! That's 100% right there. That's her leveling up so that you understand where she is and why she's not standing there 
asking you in her perky way what kind of coffee you want. So this is true of all of our relationships, okay? So think about when you have a big work at week. A week at <laughs> a big week at work, okay? You got deadlines. Me, for instance, this is my life right now. I'm married and I have a life that's happening, but I also have three courses. I'm working towards my bachelor's degree in social work. So I have Oh, I have so much reading and writing and assignments. I'm also finishing my book, Grief, a Love Story. The last um, draft is set to be complete in November. Well, guess what? That requires a lot of work by someone. So I have said to my husband on more than one occasion, thank you for understanding. I know this looks different right now. I'm staying up late. I'm getting up early. I am half connected when we're having conversations and it's because I'm working so hard at some other deadlines in this kind of frenetic sprint for the next month or so. So I've explained why I'm not leveling up and it helps him to understand it. It also helps my husband to understand that he needs to step up in a couple of different ways and support what I'm doing and carry a little more of my 100% because I've asked him to. Are you with me? Good. Okay, so now how this pertains to grief Dun, dun, dun. I have this great example from a really good friend of mine, and I think I have his permission to share this. If you've ever been a part of a play, and even if you haven't, you should be able to understand this. So in a play, we have actors, we have sound technicians, and stage managers, and light technicians, and costume people, and of course, uh, directors in front of house, we have all these people coordinating to make a play a play. Well, let's think about if our lead actor lost his dad or, or yeah, lost his dad. His dad died suddenly. And so our, our lead actor is not going to be at 100%. In fact, we may have to call in an understudy um, he's not going to be the same guy for a while. He's going to be sort of checked out because he's going to be in grief. And this means that he's not going to be 100% or that his 100% is going to look different. Okay, so when we're in a tremendous amount of grief, we're not going to know our lines. We're not going to remember things. We might not show up for rehearsal. We might be late for opening night. We might eat a lot because we're emotionally taking care of ourselves with food. And maybe our costume doesn't fit. All kinds of things can happen. And the remaining cast and crew, they have to sort of rally around this guy and, and help the 100%. So let's say we're bringing in an understudy. 100% means that we're supporting that understudy. And we're getting costumes that fit him. And we're letting him know what the cues are. And... And, and how things might look different in the production because this understudy is there. Okay, does that, mm, yeah. Um, so when we're grieving, it means that we take a giant step out of our lives and how we typically show up. So this, this friend of mine who went through a pretty tremendous loss, he kind of checked out from his life for a while and, you know, was really... Uh, have you know under a lot of heavy grief and feeling obligation from family and feeling lost and you know all these things that happen when someone dies and it meant that he wasn't cooking meals and he wasn't grocery shopping and he wasn't doing his usual stuff that was his role within his family and so part of it was just having a conversation with the family to say here's how I need you guys right now I can't show up I can't do this stuff I just can't. Here's what I need. And so by asking for what he needed, it was the level up to 100% so that everybody got covered. Nobody res was resentful. Um, everybody was communicated with, which makes a huge difference. And, and then healing could happen. And things shifted. Of course they do. Uh, grief makes a way of being carryable eventually. So if this is you, if there is a part of you that is struggling and not showing up in the way that you normally would, over-communicate. Ask for what you need and, 
and explain why your 100% looks different today. It's the same as if you show up for work and you've got the flu and you feel kind of sick. And you say to your coworkers, I'm really not feeling well today. Or if you're making a pr big presentation at work, uh, I'm not feeling great, you guys. I'm kind of, I might be running for the bathroom, right? You make these concessions and you explain and then everyone gets to understand what's going on and they get to make space for that. So ask for what you need. At the same time, ask why somebody's not showing up 100%. You know, sometimes it happens in my house that my husband is distracted for whatever reason. And so I'll say to him, what's going on with you today? What's happening? Why are you distracted? Why are you grumpy? Right? And we have a little conversation where I get to be let in on the secret and then we can all sort of make space for it. Okay, so let's identify our grief, ask for what we need, and figure out a way to lean in because it's going to look different on different days depending on what we're dealing with. But um bum That's it. That's it for this fortnight. I'm Tara Caffell. I am a life and relationship and grief coach and I'm a writer and blah blah. You can find all my links below and subscribe. Join me here. I'm here every couple of weeks nattering on about something. Okay, ciao.